So we started this set of notes in an earlier video where we started talking about sample space. And remember, we've already said that the outcome is a result of an action. So you uh, flip a coin or you roll a dice. It's what's, ha it's what's gonna happen when you do one of those things. All right, when you flip a coin, two things can happen. You can get heads or you can get tails. All right, you roll a dice, right? You're gonna get one of these sides. Right? So we said when you take all of those possibilities and make a list out of them, okay, when you have the whole set of all the possible outcomes, you get a sample space. There were two types of ways to do that. Okay, so we just made lists last time. Basically, we just wrote down on all of the individual actions that could have happened. All right? The tree diagram is what we're going to use now. And it's basically an organized way. Organized way to show all the, um, let's see, what is that gonna say? All the sets of multiple events, all right? And you're gonna do this using branches. That's why it's called a tree diagram, all right? So if you remember prime factorization, kind of where we used um, branches, kind of the same idea for tree diagrams. All right, so here's what it looks like. We're going to look at these same problems we used before. We already know, we already have a list of what should be in the sample space. We're just going to show it a different way. So the tree diagram, you have to start off with the top, right? The top of your tree. So what are the three things to, that we're going to start with? We're going to start off with the colors. Okay, so I could start with red. I have a red shirt. We could have a blue shirt or we could have a white shirt. All right. Then underneath that, you're gonna make draw branches to what could come under each of these, all right? So it could be a red, what kind of shirt? Well, there are three possibilities. It could be a red long sleeve shirt, okay? So I got a branch to that. Or it could be a red short sleeve shirt. So I have a branch to that. Or it could be a red tank top. And again, I'm abbreviating all of these just to make it easier to draw. Um, but basically, I'm showing the same thing here that I wrote out over here. So tree diagrams sometimes are a shorter way to find the sample space, um, but you just have to keep it organized. All right, so then I have to go back and look at the bl color blue now, right? So I've got the color blue and I've got three different styles. So I'm gonna draw my branches for each of this. So I could have blue long sleeve, blue short sleeve, or blue tank top. Same thing with white. I could have a white long sleeve, a white short sleeve, or a white tank top. All right. And then if I want to know, well, how many outcomes were there in my sample space, I would look at the end of each of the branches. That's your hint down here where it says count the end of the branches. If I want to know how many there are, right, I don't count everything in the sample space because if I did that, I'd be counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, I know that's not right. It's supposed to be 9, right? So it's not red and long sleeve. Red long sleeve is the whole thing. So it's each of these, it's the end of the branches that counts as a sample space, okay? But know that there's a color attached to the end of that. So this is long sleeve, but it's attached to red. And this is short sleeve, but it's attached to red. Where over here, this is short sleeve, but it's attached to blue. This one's attached to white. So these are nine different outcomes, individual outcomes, all right? So um, a lot of times what you can do is make your tree diagram, and then if it's helpful to know the list, you can use the tree diagram to make the list, to create the list. Okay, so what's at the end of each branch? This was a red long sleeve. This was a red short sleeve. This was a red tank top. Okay, over here I had a blue long sleeve, a blue short sleeve, a blue tank top. And over here I have a white long sleeve a white short sleeve, and a white tank top, okay? So I can make my list after I use my tree diagram. Sometimes it's easier to do it, to draw it out first and then find. But either way, I can see that I get nine possible outcomes, okay? And then we talked about last time also how you can check your work with the counting principle. Same thing with tree diagrams. Okay, what did we start out with? We started off with three colors and three styles. So if we multiply three times three, what do we get? nine, right, which is what we had here, and that's what we found here, nine outcomes, right? If we add the color black, and then we've changed three colors to four colors, so four times three styles would be 12, okay? And again, we'd have the same, we would add another um, tree to our tree diagram, all right? Rather, here we just made another list. Here we would do black, we could start with a black, 
And then we would have what? A long sleeve, a short sleeve, and a tank top. Okay, so that would be one, two, three, three more to add to the nine we had up here, okay, which would be 12. All right, let's keep going. If we go back to this problem, okay, we were looking at pizza crusts and toppings, right? There were two types of crusts and four types of toppings, right? So now we're just gonna, instead of making my list, I'm gonna try to draw it out as a tree diagram. So last time I drew my trees going horizontally. You can also do your trees going vertically, right? I've got two crusts, so I'm gonna let one of them be thick. And I'm gonna make sure you give yourself enough room because you're gonna be drawing branches and I'm gonna enable one of them thin. Okay, and then what's coming? What are my branches from the thick crust? Well, it's all the toppings. Could it be, could, it could be thick and cheese. So I wanna show that with a branch, thick cheese. Okay, or it could be thick sausage or thick mushroom or thick pepperoni. Okay, same thing with thin. I could have thin cheese, thin sausage, thin mushroom and then pepperoni, all right? If I needed to count how many items or how many outcomes there were in my sample space, I don't count these two, I count the end of the branches. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Which is what I got here, I had eight here, all right? And then just notice that this cheese doesn't mean just cheese, it means thick cheese. And this S for sausage doesn't just mean sausage, it means thick sausage, it's the whole branch, right? You have to trace it all the way back, all right? Here, thin, this is an S also, but this time it's a thin sausage. And again, if you make a tree diagram and then wanna make a list, you can do that, all right? So now that I see what all of the, um, the possibilities are, I could go back and say, oh, thick, this is thick cheese, this is thick sausage, this is thick mushroom, this is thick pepperoni. Right here, I could say, oh, this is thin cheese. This is thin sausage. This is thin mushroom. This is thin pepperoni, right? The same thing I did over here, but sometimes it's easier to organize it as a tree diagram first and then make your list if you need both. All right, again, the way to check myself is to multiply, right? There were how many types of crusts? There were two, right? Thick and thin, so two crusts. There were how many types of, of um, toppings, there were four. So if I multiply two times four, what do I get? Eight, right, which is what I did down here. Two times four is eight, and that is what I got as my outcome, or as my sample space, eight items in my sample space. All right, look at this last one. Isabel's ice cream, um, there are gonna be two types of flavors, three types of toppings, and two types of drizzle. Right? So again, I want to make a tree diagram showing the same thing I did over here. Now remember, this one was a little more complicated because there were so many different, um, or there was an extra one for this one. And so sometimes it's a little confusing making your list. This is where the tree diagram is especially helpful, right? Because it keeps things organized. All right, so I'm going to start with the first two. It could be vanilla or chocolate. And again, the only tricky part of... The tree diagram is just leaving yourself enough frame because this is going to branch out. So you kind of have to spread things out at the beginning so that you give yourself enough frame to draw it all. And I have chocolate. Chocolate. Okay, so then after I choose a flavor, then I have to choose a topping. So out of vanilla, I could choose peanuts, bananas, or sprinkles. <coughs> out of chocolate. I could choose peanuts, banana, or sprinkles, okay? But I'm not done because I can still, after I choose the topping, then I still have to choose the drizzle, all right? So I could choose vanilla and I could choose peanuts, but then I still have two choices. So this time from peanuts, I'm gonna have another set of branches. I could have caramel or I could have fudge, okay? Same thing with banana. I could have caramel or I could have fudge. And then with, uh, what is this, sprinkles? I could have caramel or I could have fudge. Sorry, that's enough. All right, so look back down at chocolate. Chocolate, we've, um, we've chosen our toppings, but we still need to choose our drizzle, All right? Well, it's not chocolate, chocolate, peanuts, and then caramel only. It's caramel or fudge, so I have to show both of them. So I get another set of branches. Caramel or fudge, and then from bananas, caramel or fudge. And then from sprinkles, caramel or fudge. All right, 
And then you could, if they gave you another category, if they said, all right, well, what kind of cone do you want it in? Do you want it in a, um, a cone or a bowl? or a sugar cone or a waffle cone, okay? So you could, this could keep going. This could potentially be this huge treat, right? Which might seem kind of um, complicated, but it's still, okay, a great way to keep track. And sometimes with a list, we lose some of this. So this is a great way. Now, if I'm trying to figure out, well, how many outcomes are there based on my tree diagram, what do I count? Not every single thing on here. I count the ends of the branches, just the very end, right? So there was one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There were twelve outcomes. Why am I counting this? Because the end of the branch goes all the way back to the beginning. All right. Even though I'm circling the C, what I'm really meaning is this is vanilla peanut um, caramel. Okay. And though I'm circling the F here, what does that F stand for? Well, it really stands for vanilla peanuts fudge. Okay, and even though I circled another C here, it's not the same C as this one, because this C is not attached to P, this C is attached to B. Okay, it's vanilla banana caramel. Okay, and this F is vanilla banana fudge. This C, okay, what is it attached to? You kind of work your way backwards. Okay, it's attached to the sprinkles. So this one, this C is really vanilla sprinkles caramel. And this F is really vanilla sprinkle fudge. Okay, and then when I skip down here, this is another C, but it's not attached to vanilla even. Okay, it's attached to P, which this one was, but what's the difference? It goes back to chocolate. So it's, if I read it this way though, it's chocolate, peanut, caramel. Okay, this F goes back to this ch chocolate right here. So chocolate, peanut, fudge. This one, this is a C, but it goes back through the V. So chocolate, banana, caramel. Chocolate, banana, fudge, and then this last one, what is it attached to? The chocolate, sprinkle, caramel. Chocolate, sprinkle, caramel, and this one is what? Chocolate, sprinkle, fudge. All right? So I know that I'm repeating what I already did over here, but what I want you to see is that sometimes you may have to fill in the missing ones. I want you to know how to read a tree diagram, and also I want you to know what the end of this diagram is really, what it really stands for. Okay, so then again, if I use the counting principle one more time just to check my work, all right, I had two flavors, I had three toppings, and I had two drizzles. So if I multiply all these together, two times three times two, two times three is six, six times two is 12. Is that how many outcomes I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Then yes, I found all my possibilities. All right, so that's tree diagrams and uh, sample spaces. Thanks.